Day YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. With the mystery ancestral artifact here. Not particularly mysterious to me because I know what it is, but some of you may never have seen one of these before. Though some people will have seen something similar on both Cody's Lab channel and BigClive.com channel. Because uh, in the past week, both of them have reviewed pretty much identical items which are similar to this. But this is much more newer and modern and more newfangled. Beginning with the point that because it's fairly heavy at uh, 13 and a half pounds, the carrying handle is right on the center of gravity, which is nice. You'll also notice that the carrying handle has what's called a ZUS fastener, spelt D-Z-U-S. And it's spring-loaded. If you push down and rotate 90 degrees, it comes straight off. The handle has four square edge notches at one end, round at the other end, two little pins. There are four large flat ribs on the end cap which engage with the notches on the handle. Brass end cap inside of which we have another fitting for the Zuss type fastener on the handle. So if we put that in and turn it 45 degrees and we pull on the handle, it comes up pretty easily. It doesn't come up very far, but it does come up. And now we can see that the square shaft under the T-handle has flat teeth built into it. And when we push it down, you can hear there's moving things inside. Yes, tuberosities, you guessed it. This is a blasting dynamo. A setting off a string of charges. And I'm pretty sure this is the one my father acquired in about 1946 or 47. And I saw it in about 1970 when he said that somebody had asked to borrow it. And then two and a half years ago, my son bought the local auto electrician shop and he called me down and he asked me to have a look at this and see if I could figure out what it was. And it came back to the family, so to speak. Okay, if you have a look at the voltmeter, it's calibrated in DC volts. 45. 62. That was 80. 73. 91. 92. 91. That's DC volts. Now we'll see what it does in amps. One point eight amps, one point three, three point seven, point two, two point eight, one point three. So somewhere around two or three amps. Let's call it a convenient portable machine for putting out somewhere between a hundred and eighty and 280 watts worth of current in a pulse that lasts less than a second. Three amps, 92 volts. As I think it was bigclive.com said, if you were to touch the terminals while pushing the uh, plunger down, it would hurt. And if you were to touch the terminals with two different hands while somebody else pushed the plunger down, you might actually shock your heart into complete asystole and then you would die. So 
before we have a look at what's inside on the bottom there to ensure water tightness screw fixing screws fully home and fill cavities with compound and if you look closely you can see there's a hole there and there's another hole there and once upon a time there has been some other plate affixed to the top it's been removed and those two holes have allowed some water to get inside the case in the intervening time since being demobilized in 1946 and showing up here in 2017 to be looked at however before we get into this one to give you something to compare it to we'll have a look at what's inside the pre-World War II type blasting dynamo which is in a wooden case we'll have a little bit of a look at the uh, Cody's lab version which at 214,000 views is going pretty well several times to set up explosions and today I'm going to show you guys how it works. This produces quite a substantial amount of power. I have eight Christmas lights here. Let's turn off the lights in the room so you can see them a little bit better. At least we got a little bit of light coming out the window. Now when I depress this, you see it lit up all the lights very bright. Let's see if they'll uh, work again. out it just sort of ratchets you can hear the ratcheting noise and I push it back it's in here you can actually see the little ratchet lever back in there and if I can get the light to go back in there now when I push it down it spins this up and produces a bunch of power you can see here up uh how the switch is it causes the whole thing to spin got a little spring here hold the tension on it So it looks like it does its part. It does it here. That thing rolled. Like that thing is pretty handy. I guess uh, back then they didn't really have strong ceramic or a little uh, metal plate right here. That the uh, bottom of the plunger bar slammed into. I think this would be made out of rubber or something. So That plunger bar he was talking about, <clears throat> that's where it connects with the switch. Anyway, I reckon we've learned about as much as we can from that. I had thought to continue looking at Cody's lab version for a little bit longer but the resolution was really poor and uh, it wasn't showing what I wanted it to show anyway these screws come out pretty easily despite the corking compound And at this point you'd think it'd be easy to get it apart but we had terrible trouble getting it apart last night until eventually my son remembered that it's necessary to remove the cap whereupon it becomes easy easy not japanesey generator number department of defense with a broad arrow 
9405. It has typewritten instructions which states armature replacement. If on fitting a new armature the instrument does not generate reverse brush leads. You'd never figure that out on your own, would you? There we see the commutator with two brushes. We see cotton waxed wire um, thread on the armature, mica in between the copper elements. And there we see the gearbox, which has a ratchet. In the plunge, the ratchet drives the geared wheel two and a half times, and by dint of those gears right in there in the center, actually, I think it's three and a half to one step up ratio between this and this, whereas a downstroke on the plunger. One plunge, two turns, one turn, three and a half turns. What that gives you is seven and a half turns of the armature for one plunge. I know this because last night we actually marked the tooth and counted them. So as I understand it, there's a soft iron core to the armature. There is soft iron inside the windings of the field magnets, and that soft iron has a residual magnetic field. As soon as you start to turn the armature inside the residual magnetic field from the field magnets, the armature picks up the field and turn, converts it into current. The current comes out the commutator through the brushes. The brushes feed not only up to the contacts, which carry the, cow, the power to the terminals on the outside of the aluminium case. The current from the commutator going to this brush, it also goes through this wire and it goes in to excite the field winding on the electromagnet, which increases the field strength strength which the armature picks up which turns into current which comes back through the brush which goes back in there and the whole thing goes around seven times by which time the armature is turning quite fast and when the plunger gets to the extreme bottom end of its stroke as you can see there it runs into a little switch block as you see try that again That's what actually makes the contact between the dynamo, which is effectively full of electricity, and whereas for the first seven turns of the armature, it's merely been strengthening its own field coil and building up current. On the last half turn, the still powered armature has all of the current shunted out through these terminals, onto the terminals on the case, and off down the line to your detonators, to explode the charge and blow up whatever the hell it was that you thought needed to blow up. And as I said, when my son showed this to me a couple of years ago, it was the first time I'd seen it for about 35 years. And by the synchronicity of the coincidence, just like when it's aeroplane time, people build aeroplanes. When it's steamboat time, people build steamboats. When it's blasting dynamo explanation video time, people make blasting dynamo explanation videos. And I'm proud to add mine. So that of Cody's Lab and BigClive.com, and now there are three Blasting Dynamo explanation videos. Wobbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao! Cody reckoned his grandfather's Blasting Dynamo produces 60 to 90 volts. We saw this one produce 93 volts today. So, more compact, more weatherproof, more durable, battle-hardened. The 19, well, 43 they started making them in Australia. This one does have the number 39 branded on its 
with a cover with a plunge handle as well as EMV 23C as well as EMV I think that's the Department of Defence Broad Arrow 18 on the case and now it all goes back together I trust you enjoyed that. Ciao!